Day two of the G7 summit happening in Germany right now. World leaders are moving closer to setting a global price cap for Russian oil. Joining me now, Price Futures Group senior market analyst, a Fox Business contributor, Phil mm -hmm. Flynn. Phil, what do you make of this move? I, I think it's crazy, right? I mean, this is a group that has tried sanctions six different times and they're failing. Russians' oil revenue is higher than it was before the war, and, and now they're trying to, to cap prices. Uh, that's an admission that they can't get off of Russian oil and gas. And to think that they're going to be able to cap the price and magically, you know, Russia is just going to continue to provide oil uh, is it, fantasy. So I don't know what they're thinking about. Obviously, I just don't think they're thinking at all. In the meantime, last week, President Biden and company did nothing to suggest that they would support our fossil fuel industry, instead always sidling up to the green energy movement. So what takes president? A windmill meeting, but not meeting face to face with energy executives who, uh, based on reports, were surprised that they didn't get FaceTime after they came all the way to the White House. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, this is the first president in, in modern history that's failed to meet with the big energy companies. And they have to realize that energy is still a big part of, of the U.S. economy. It provides union jobs, high paying jobs. Uh, it's a big part of our economy. And to just snub them, you know, like little kids, it's, it's just it shows how out of touch this president is uh, with the economy and with the American people. And now here at the G7, what does he do there? He's doubling down. He's spending more taxpayer dollars on green energies for poor mm -hmm. countries, for environmental justice. Uh, he's getting the entire G7 nations to contribute more to this. I think he needs to contribute more to developing U.S. oil and gas resources so we don't get into the type of situation we have in Europe where somebody like Russia is controlling um, mm -hmm. Europe uh, with their oil and gas. We handed, we handed Vladimir Putin power, uh, we handed him wealth by um, President Biden restricting and attacking our energy sector. You mentioned what Biden was talking about. Just listen to this real quick and I'll get your reaction, Phil. The entire world is feeling the impact of Russia's brutal war in Ukraine and on our energy markets. We need worldwide effort to invest in transformative clean energy projects to ensure that critical infrastructure is resilient to changing climate. Critical materials are necessary for our clean energy transition. He is actively causing high gas prices. He is. You know, he's saying that, you know, that the inability to invest in green energies is causing the problem. It's President Biden's policies that have led to this situation. Listen, one of the things that Russia was always worried about was protecting their oil and gas interest in Europe. While Europe made this green energy transition, they worked very closely with Germany and other European nations to assure them that no matter what, they would continue to be a reliable supplier of energy. And the EU bought it. You know, they closed their nuclear power plants. They closed their natural gas fields. They, they shut down a, uh, you know, drilling and, and everything else. And now look at where they're at. They're going to have to reopen those plants, reopen the nuclear plants, reopen the coal plants. And at the same time, Vladimir Putin is crying all the way to the max. The sanctions have failed. Uh, it's failing the global economy. And the national security of the entire world right. is in jeopardy because of this short-sighted policy. Right. Before we move, we, we have to say so long. So AAA is expecting a record number of people on the road here in the U.S. 42 million people will be driving this July 4th holiday weekend despite gas prices. The current national average for gasoline is $4.87 a gallon. Phil, this could... Or, 4.89. It, it's below five dollars. We're. I'm saying one thing. We're showing another. But it could keep falling, couldn't it? 
It could. I mean, listen, the bottom line here, we have pent up demand for gasoline. You know, we're talking about a record, you know, 4th of July holiday. But to be honest with you, it probably would have been bigger if gasoline prices weren't as high as they are. And, and you know, listen, consumers are trying to adjust to these higher prices for gasoline. But at the end of the day, when, whenever they spend a dollar on gasoline, they're not going to be spending it on something else. So that's a big issue. Listen, the U.S. refiners are doing a great job trying to keep those prices low, despite the fact that the Biden administration has stood in their way every every chance they get. Uh, so I have to credit the U.S. refining industry, you know, for splitting, you know, basically producing more gasoline at a time where everybody's trying to shut them down. Well said. Phil, thank you so much. Phil Flynn. We'll see you very soon, sir.